all the buildings require a proper structural scheming layout so it is very important to prepare a proper structural scheming layout of the building to maintain the good structural performance of the building it is the structural engineer's responsibility to make a proper structural scheming layout so that the loads will get transferred to the respective structural members and we will get the proper structural performance of the building throughout its intended life hey friends welcome back to civil engineering mastery in this video we are going to discuss about what are all the important points we need to consider while designing the beam layout so without further delay let's begin now first let's start off with why do we need this beam layout technically as well as non-technically we can also say it as structurally and non-structurally so it is the structural engineer's responsibility to make the beam layout according to the architectural drawing this beam layout will help us to speed up the process of construction and also it helps to coordinate with the architect client nep consultant and also the engineers who is working on the site in this way the beam layout is very helpful in terms of non-structural aspect now let's get into the structural aspect in structural aspect the major important thing is the load transfer mechanism because whatever the loads which is coming on the structure that needs to be properly transferred to the ground without any problem for example the slab load will getting transferred to the beam and the beam will carry the slab load and it transfer to the column and the column will carry all the loads that is slab and beam load and then it safely transfer to the footing and finally it goes on to the ground so this is very important the loads need to be transferred properly to the respective structural members without any problem so it is the structural engineer's responsibility to make the proper scheme of the building or proper frame of the building in order to transfer the loads which is coming on the structure that needs to be transferred safely to the ground in structural aspect this beam layout helps in three things it is dividing the slab into different groups and it helps to tie all the columns in around the building and also it provide support to the walls which is coming on the beam so let's discuss this concept little briefly now let's look into this layout how the beam is helping to divide the slab into different groups if you look into the slab s2 beam 8 beam 2 beam 9 and beam 3 are the supporting beams that means the load which is coming on this area will get transferred to these all four beams and also these beams are dividing the slab actually slab is a luxural member which is mainly depend on the bending moment and shear force which is coming on it so according to that we have to decide the thickness of the slab how much load which is coming on the slab and also what is the span of the slab so the span and the load which decides the slab thickness here the beam layout is helping in dividing the slab into smaller spans and then according to that we need to decide the thickness of the slab so if the span of the slab is less can go with the lesser thickness of the slab so this is how the beam layout helps in dividing the slab into different groups and it safely takes care of the slab load next one is tying the column in this layout we have many number of columns all the columns are connected together by using beams in each direction so this will provide the lateral resistance to the building if the columns are untied the columns will become slender that is long column due to this slender column the lateral sway of the building will get increased and then due to the lateral sway the slenderness moments will also get increased and finally we end up providing the larger size of the column so in order to avoid these things we need to tie the columns properly by using beams so in this way beam layout will be helpful in tying the columns in addition to this while connecting the columns by using beams the structural engineer must know where to provide the primary beam and where to provide the secondary beam here primary beam is the beam which is supported by the columns whereas the secondary beams are the beams which are supported by the primary beams initially 
it looks little difficult once you practice and understand the concepts clearly it will become more easy and that requires some experience if you have to do many projects many different types of uh, scheming of the building so that you will get the proper idea of how to make the beam layout properly third one is supporting the walls when we make the beam layout the beams will be supporting the walls which is coming above if you consider the architectural drawings we have walls over here these walls needs to be supported by the beams for example if you take this ground floor roof framing plan that is at the first floor level we have to use this ground floor plan as well as the first floor plan and according to this walls we need to make the beam layout in some cases all the beams will not be supported properly by the beams because the wall architectural wall line and the beam line will not coincide together in that case the walls will be directly sitting on the slab so we have to design the slab in such a way that it has to take care of the wall load in some cases that will become uneconomical we need to end up providing more slab thickness and all again it is a structural engineer's responsibility to make the proper scheming of the beam layout so that all the loads will be transferred properly to the supporting members let me explain with the example see here beam 6 is connected with these two columns this is considered as a primary beam and if you look into this first floor plan we have wall over here so this wall will be resting on this beam 6 and all the outer walls will be supported by the beams provided in the outer layout so this is how we have to make the beam layout to support the walls so in addition to these three points we have other things as well that is when you have cutouts or shaft in buildings that area also we have to provide more beams so always we will be having the duct area cutout area or shaft in the building for example see if you look into this area this is the staircase cutout so we need to provide beams in and around the cutout area similarly when we have the duct area or shaft area in that place also we have to provide the beams and whenever there is a repair work if we have to add any few additional things like staircase and all we have to add more beams in that area also so structural engineer must know the supporting systems and according to that he or she has to make the proper beam layout so it is very important to make the proper structural scheming layout so this is the major thing which you have to do initially before starting any structural project so if you are start learning how to make the structural layout of the building the first step you have to do is you have to study many structural layouts you have to understand the structural scheme of the building how the loads are getting transferred and then the next step is you have to take some of the real projects and you have to work on it how you can make the structural scheme of the building how you can transfer the loads safely to the structural members and in this way you can learn how we, you can make the proper structural scheming layout of the building so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome and if you want any topic which is related to civil engineering please do let me know in the comment box so that i'll prepare a video for that and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos thank you for watching